Hi there, this is uh, George from California. Yesterday, um, got my three year completion of uh, Okravest. I started at Okravest in 2017. You know, from the very beginning, I knew that something changed. You can always tell when something changes in your body, for better or for worse, you know, especially with MS, when it's starting to go through the insidious days. Just, they can't find out it's elusive, you know, what's going on, this, that. But anyhow, the beginning, I thought, well, the steroids, right? I felt a little better, but after a few months, I was regaining strength. I wasn't as fatigued. I, I was able to, you know, kind of return to some normalcy. As time progressed, I was able to get stronger, and I thought, wow, this stuff is real. You know, I started making videos. That was cool. So anyhow, three years on Ocrevus, I've tolerated well, no side effects. And I'm so happy that I'm on it. I talked to a neurologist and uh, he says, yeah, George, you're, it's working out for you in your case, because we know it's an individualized response. I said, but he did tell me, you know, uh, I saw some people, they choose not to do disease modifying drugs. And I saw a young girl recently and she came in walking, dealing with her MS. No disease modifying drugs, that was her choice. And, and six months later, she's in a wheelchair. Well, we know how the mess is, right? Insidious, elusive, unpredictable. That's what I think, okay? But it's an individualized choice. Some medicines don't work out for people. It's their chemistry. It's your decision, you know, it's your doctor, but the patient, they have the right to self-determination. Treat or not treat. And we know there's a lot of options out there. So. I'm sharing my experience. My choice is disease modifying drugs. It always was since uh, in the 90s, 93s when it started out. I started off with interferon, Avonex, Copax in 14 years. Then I tried some other mystocloxacine mis or something like that. That was, they said it was maybe, I had a neurologist that kind of worked with me. It was an antibiotic. I tried that for a while. Uh, and then, uh, Tech Federa, uh, two or three years, and then Ocrevus. Three years, doing really good. But uh, something else that I would like to share with you guys is what's really helped me is I'm always, uh, well, attitude, gratitude. Someone once told me your, altitude, your attitude will determine your altitude. So that's a good thing. So recently I was uh, trying kombucha, but it's, I was drinking too much, too sweet. Uh, my body was changing again. You can tell when your body's changing. So I decided to just kind of put that down and just drink a little bit sparringly. Too expensive anyway. So then I was watching a special where uh, in Germany, this one lady was saying that this one uh, chemical from pomegranates was helping her. So, uh, and she has MS and she made, did her testimony and you can always buy supplements. We know that. So, but anyhow. <coughs> pomegranate tea. I make it, I boil it, sweeten it up to my liking. I, it helps me, it tastes good. I don't seem to be getting a lot of bladder urgency with it right on. <clears throat> and thank goodness for a lot of uh, comments out there. Comments are always good. It's a really cool thing. Anyhow, uh, someone was saying, uh, again, I don't mention names or places or, or institutions or anything, it's privacy. But anyhow, a viewer mentioned that uh, essential oils, you know, and a long time ago, my wife, she says, you need this. And it was like lavender, calm me down because sometimes I, I kind of get pumped up. Yep, that's me, you know. So anyhow, somebody recommended ginger. Hey, uh, it's got a bite to it. I boil it, I sweeten it, I bottle it. Ginger, it's cheaper than buying all that stuff. I, I don't like contaminating, contaminating the environment with plastic anyway. Water, oh man, water is just so important. We need, I don't think we drink enough water and I found in my case again, anyhow, if you uh, drink bottled water, it tastes much better. I'm sure it depends on you know where you're getting your water from, but at least we're in the Central Valley in Turlock and our little puny little town, 70,000 people, which is a nut. We have COVID. 
Yeah, so we're we're doing a self quarantine kind of isolation, but you know we gotta stay positive. Even someone with MS says, "Well, we're always in isolation. We don't get out. We're well. That's a personal choice, man. You can still get out. You know, you can stay still busy. You know, just because you're like in this body, you don't have to be locked in. You know, you can do stuff. So." And now with the internet, you can travel the world with the internet. You don't have to be running around in a car, spending gas and all that. But anyhow, my daughter and I, we've been doing some art. First we did the painting, but then we got bead creep coming off our pool. So we found all these beads and I'm always saying I'm powered. I have turtle power. And then you have that sign that says forward is forward, no matter the speed, turtle power. I'm total about turtle power, it's cool. So anyhow, going back to our emotions, you know, for a long time, I was driven by anger. You know, <clears throat> some people are able to harness their anger. I think Mike Tyson was pretty, pretty angered, man, because he could like, boom, man, knock somebody out, right? That's a lot of energy and power coming from somewhere, you know, that's harnessing your emotions. I do believe it's important to have the calm emotion, you know? Kind of like the Zen, control your emotions, you can control your behavior. You're not gonna be overreacting. You're gonna be responding, you're gonna be dealing with it in the correct, mindful way. I try to be like that, but sometimes I'm not. But sometimes I realize too that my emotions will flame up like a fire. And then sometimes they'll simmer down, calm. But those coals are hot. Those coals are hot. I remember telling one time, because and it's been a long time now, I told somebody, I'm one scratch away from being on fire, which is pretty dangerous, you know, especially when when you're still pretty strong and capable. I'm kind of not like that anymore, but anyhow. So nowadays I practice meditation, stay informed. I try to give back. I try to be a giver and a lot of people help me and I'm grateful for any comments or <clears throat> for all the doctors and nurses and the people, the counselors, friends, you know, the little things make the big difference. One time I was talking with this guy and I said, you know, I ate right, I exercised, I was in, conscious about so many things and I still got sick. I was so strong and healthy, jogging and and he said, well, don't you think that being in such good physical condition, condition and mind, body, and spirit, <clears throat> that that may give you, that may, made you more able to survive? And that's one little comment <laughs> that's made a big difference in my life. Not that I wasn't all very health-oriented and, mi and mindful already. I was, but... He put that into the focus where I'm saying, yeah, I used it then, it helped me then, and I can use it today. Hey, take care, this is uh, George from California. Today is my daughter's 12th birthday, life goes on. I'm feeling good, Okra was three years. Take care.